Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'll introduce myself again. My name is uh, Vern Lundquist. Uh, I've been associated with the AAC now for a couple of years, uh, in large part because of my friendship with uh, Michael Oresco. Uh, Michael asked us to come back here two years ago and, and help moderate the panel and uh, facilitate the conversation with the coaches. Uh, and we're happy, had, had to miss last year. I was involved with a bunch of Big Ten alumni on a cruise ship uh, in Alaska. I'd rather be here. Uh, if we could have everybody please take your seats. And I'm going to begin just to open this conversation up uh, by introducing the coaches we have here. Uh, Willie Fritz from Tulane, Josh Hoipel, Rod Carey, uh, Ken Niamatololo. This is the first of four panels that we're going to do this morning. Uh, and we'll have four coaches at each of the three and then four student athletes uh, to round up the morning. Uh, Willie, why, let's just, uh, would you tell us about uh, the student athletes you've brought to this media days? Yeah, I've got three guys. Uh, Whoops. That's thing, you got it? All right, I brought three guys. Patrick Johnson, who was a second team all conference performer last year, plays uh, outside linebacker for us. PJ Hall, uh, defensive back, been a four year starter for us. And, and also Darius Bradwell, he's the MVP of the the Cure Bowl a game, a running back for us, had 150 yards in that game, but three fine young men. How about Josh? Uh, Jordan Johnson uh, was a, uh, a guy that was a captain for us a, a year ago. Uh, we select him by week and, and uh, had multiple weeks where he was a captain. Uh, Three-year starter at center for us and an all-conference member. Gabe Davis, uh, wide receiver, all-conference uh, wide receiver a year ago. And uh, from the defense side of the ball, Richie Grant, uh, who's on a bunch of preseason award lists. Rod, how about Temple? Yeah, so Jovan Fair, uh, uh, a guard for us. Uh, Sean Bradley, linebacker for us. Chappelle Russell, linebacker for us. And then Isaiah Wright, uh, wide receiver and return specialist for us. Those four. Kenny? Uh, we brought two young men, uh, Fort Higgins, uh, probably one of the better centers that we've had. Our team captain was also recently voted as the captains of captains at the United States Naval Academy, which is a pretty big honor at the school with, with you know, a, a ton of leaders there. And also our defensive tackle, Marcus Edwards from Tucson, Arizona. We want to keep this uh, an open conversation and not just one, two, three, and four. Uh, I'm just going to open this with a question, and anybody who wants can take it. If you had a one idea to enhance the safety of this game, what would you like to see instituted? Anybody want to grab that? Nobody. <laughs> okay, can we get this mic on? I, I definitely feel like we're going in the right direction. Changed. A lot of the rules for the safety of the student athletes and I think all the coaches have bought into it and uh, you know I think some that we did yesterday with talking about to uh, USA football and uh, you know uh, in regards to tackling and blocking and the proper way to do it you know with the college coaches and even the NFL coaches you know talking uh, to those uh, different uh, uh, entities uh, really helps the sport out tremendously I think the one I part I think about, but I don't really know the answer yet, so how to do it, but just kick off. And I think for me, I guess it's been kind of a little bit personal because my son is on special teams at a Division One school, and so my text messages to him every day, make sure you keep your head up, you know what I mean, and eyes up, just uh, all the concussions, all the major injuries have been on that team. You know, how can we do it, but you know, how can you start the game? And there's been a lot of different discussions on how to do it. I don't think anybody's really figured it out. But that's the one part that I think it's pretty violent. You got guys running at 40 yards, full set. Would you like to see the kickoff eliminate? If you could, if you could figure out a way that you could start it. And I don't exactly know that. I know there been guys talking about doing a pun or certain things. I know it's a big part of the game. It's exciting. But just talking about the, the safety of the game, that's the one thing I think about is just kickoff. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I think we've done so many things, like Coach said, uh, to make the game safer. I don't want to see the kickoff go, but I do understand the rate of injury that, you know, listen, numbers are numbers, right? And, 
you have to address that uh, as we go. And the NFF done, has done a great job addressing those numbers. And so we'll take a look at it and see. I, I don't have an answer for you, Vern. I'm not smart enough to know that yet. So I'll let that to better minds. Uh, targeting. Is it difficult to administer? Uh, are you satisfied with the way the targeting rule is being interpreted right now? Well, I, I think it would be interesting to see how the, the changes in, in how replay uh, uh, views it this year and then their ability to, uh, to have to make a, an exact call on it versus just confirming what was on the field. Uh, I think that has an opportunity for us to make it more right uh, for, uh, for some of the kids and uh, in making the right call uh, at the right time. Yeah, we had a kid uh, at Northern last year um, go out on a call that I believe, and he missed the first half of our championship game, uh, on a call that I believe under the rules now, he would have been reinstated um, or it would have been eliminated right there. And uh, really that it impacted that game. It was a, a big third down, and it also impacted our first half. So I'm excited for the rules. Um, I think we still got a ways to go to get this right. I agree, like what Willie said, I think there's some things in the right direction. I think we're not just administering, but just trying to coach it. You know, what are exact things and trying to coach it? I think we're all trying to figure that out. But we've gotten better. I think all of us have gotten better at it just because of the discussion that's happening. Uh, Mike and I and Nancy and Sharon had dinner last night. We were chatting about possible questions, and he said he wanted me to ask not only you four, but the next t uh, eight, about the coach's ability to call a timeout at end of game kicking situations. Uh, Mike is a proponent of doing away with that uh, opportunity you have to ice the kicker. Uh, do you want to keep that? I have no problems with the way it's uh, it's playing out. It's it's forcing a coach to make a decision, and, and uh, um, at the end of the day, it, it provides a little bit of controversy at the end of the the game as well. You know, so I'm fine with it. I, I don't have a problem with it either. You know, one thing uh, I would like to see with our rules is uniformity from the NFL on down. It'd be neat if all of us, the high schools, the colleges, and the NFL, all played by the, the same field markings, the you know the the, the same rules and uh, Certainly, uh, you know, th that is a lot of gamesmanship involved with that, but I don't have a problem with it. No. Nope. You want to reserve that right. <laughs> Ice the guy. Uh, is, I can remember 30 years ago when I was doing the Dallas Cowboys on radio and Tex Schramm was a very big part of the NFL Rules Committee, and he said, we've got to use replay because it's there and it will be involved in the telecast. Let's embrace it. Has replay have a, have a proper place in the administration of college football? Too much, too little? You know, the only thing, you know, problem I think we have is the length of the game sometimes and how long it takes to decide hmm. whether it should be overturned or not overturned. But I think it's great for the ball game. It gives an opportunity for, for the officials, to, you know, to get it right. And, you know, things happen so quickly. It's a tough game to call. Do they take too long? Yeah, they probably do. But I'd rather have it this way than the NFL way where you got to throw a flag. I like our rule better than the NFL. Uh, they look at everything or should be looking at everything. Right. And you can kind of finagle a timeout if you need to to get them to take an extra peek without a challenge. So I like ours a little bit better. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm the same way. Get it right. You know, there's no perfect system. You know, you'd obviously like it quicker, but I'd rather get it right. We had an occasion, one of the more famous finishes to a football game ever, uh, Alabama-Auburn in 2013. And did T.J., you might remember this, did T.J. Yeldon of Alabama touch down with no time left out of bounds, or was there one second left? And Nick Saban threw the challenge flag. And Matt Austin was the official. And it took them seven minutes to make a decision. And they finally, our producer said to me, keep talking. 
because they want us to marry the end zone camera with the sideline camera. And it's not just sync them up. You had to, uh, and finally they got it right. And, uh, but it took seven minutes, it was an eternity. And yet the end product was correct. And then of course the kick returns a missed field goal, 50, 109 yards for a touchdown. Uh, monetization of their name for student athletes. Is it, is it a fair system now where they don't get any accrued value for the use of their name. I know there's a lawsuit that uh, O'Bannon has, has filed. Would you like to see the system change in any way? It's gonna, right? So whether we want to or not, it's gonna happen. Uh, I think that that, that one, uh, personal feelings aside from it, uh, how do you tier it? So the star quarterback and to the backup left guard right you know how, how do we do that i think that's more the question than should it's how because i think you know should is common uh and then even further how do you do the uh the backup defender in women's volleyball yeah absolutely yeah which is a better analogy yeah how about you guys I think it's our duty to, to continue to provide the best uh, experience uh, to all the student athletes in our athletic departments that we possibly can. I think you, you look over the last two decades, we've continued to make strides. Um, it's going to continue to change. It's going to continue to evolve. I don't have the answer right now sitting up here, um, but uh, I think we're going to continue to, to do right by the, the student athletes. You, you know, I worry about, you know, how, how would a guy promote himself to, to get more business? So you can sell more things, mm -hmm. and you know, all of a sudden you, you you've got a uh, you know 100 guys doing that, trying to trying to you know make a little bit more money. There, it's going to come a time where we're going to do it. There's no question about it. Just got to find the right way to do it. Uh, loaded question, <laughs> uh, among others. Uh, do shoe companies have too much influence in college athletics? Stunned silence. We all have shoe contracts, Vern. I know that. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Probably. I mean, money's money, right? You follow the money, you follow the power. That's probably true in all walks of life, but certainly in ours. I mean, a lot of benefits, you know, that come to our game through them. Obviously, with that, there have been some other things that are not so good, but... Um, it's a tough question. It is what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, Josh, any? I think whether it's uh, you know shoe companies or television uh, revenue, uh, we've continued to enhance the game, which has enhanced the the collegiate experience for for student athletes. Is it perfect? No, but uh, uh, it's certainly continuing to make it better for them. Uh, this is the real world. Should every student athlete who enters uh, a university have a realistic expectation of graduation four or five years I, I think so I think that's you know our number one goal as coaches and is to make sure our guys get their degree you know uh, prior to leaving mm -hmm. the institution and uh, I think it's a very realistic goal I think it's a, one that we all are proponents of and I think as you look at the numbers schools are doing a good job of doing that yeah. You know, guys are graduating, guys are graduate students going on and getting their master's. I mean, I think schools are doing a good job with that. Ron? Yeah, no, I, the numbers from the NFF, that card that we had, yeah. so we were sitting out here, the numbers bear it. And so numbers bear expectations. So um, I think that that is exactly where we should be. Okay, guys, uh, we're, we're keeping it brief this year. Uh, I appreciate it. Kenny, Rod, Josh, Willie. Uh, continued success to all you. I expect an 11 0 record this year. <laughs> no pressure. I, I got no. I, I, Ken and I are old friends, and he he was kind enough to introduce me at the Washington Touchdown Club function in April. And he said, All I know is that when Vern was doing Army Navy, we were 9 and 1. 
once he retired, were 0 and 2. So it's not my fault. Good luck to you. Rod, good luck to you and Temple. Josh, Willie, thank you guys very, very much.